Hi, my name is Kevin McDonnell and welcome to the Progressive Property Podcast. I've got a really special guest on the podcast today and I think it's going to be some fun. So I've got with us today PY and PY is the CEO of London Resort Holdings, which is a company that are building England's version of Disney, basically. But he's not just um, the CEO of London Resort Holdings. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's been involved in various different businesses in his career. So let's get straight into the podcast. Hi, PY. Bonjour. Bonjour. My, my Your French, French is doing well. Not my bad, French is not bad. good. My yes. English has just got good because I used to. I'm Irish. And English is my second language, but my French I'm working on. Uh, ça va? Très bien, merci. Okay, can we, we stop there can now. We go back to English. Yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Is that English you're speaking? <laughs> it is. Try, it is. It's an Irish English. Yes. Top so, of the morning to you. I said, told you this would be fun. Um, top of the morning to you. <laughs> Afternoon, actually, but that's all right. You're like me. You you live in the UK. Yes. So I'm Irish, moved to the UK. You're yeah, French, I'm, an, I'm an economic refugee. You're, so, so am I. And, are you? And we, we, it's um, going well so in the, Ireland. What's your problem? one thing we've got in common. You're a spy. I'm, a, I'm an Irish yeah, spy. Exactly what it I'm, is. I'm here, um, I said, I'm, I'm here trying to gain intelligence. And somebody said, you need to. Where are you going to find that? <laughs> Not here, that's for sure. <laughs> but I've been in England for um, 17 odd years. And, and 20. 20 years. So around the same, same sort of time. Yeah. Except you, not applying for a British passport, though. I've been doing a lot of... Pro- I've not applied for one either. I still have my Irish passport. Yeah, French. Um, I might need one on Brexit, but if it ever happens... We've got to be expelled out of the country. <laughs> we'll be fine. We could. Brexit might be happening by the time people yeah, listen. N- Nigel's got a car out here to escort me to the premises. <laughs> yeah. Bless him. Not. If you listen to this and Brexit's already happened... Yes. It's happened. I'm off. Um, so <laughs> this is why we're doing it now. Yes. I, I do a lot of property stuff, and most of our audience are property investors, um, like houses, yep. commercial buildings and yep. stuff. Um, but you've been in business for a number of years, doing a, a lot of property stuff. Um, but can we take you back before before business? What You actually used to do something else. Before yeah, yeah, business. I used to beat up people like you for a living. You did? I hockey player. That was my job. So you were legally beating people up? Absolutely, very legally. How long? Well, you- not that legally, because if you push too hard, you get into penalty box, which I did a lot. How, but I got no teeth left, though. How long were you an ice hockey player? Uh, eight years professional. Wow. And then I, I very kindly finished in a wheelchair for two years. Really? Yeah. Oh, Broken Jesus. in pieces. I, you know, I was seven foot tall at the time. Look at me, five eight now, midget. You're standing up. Yes. I'm on the chair, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you might be talking. I used to play professional pool. There was more money Is in that ice. a sport? Exactly, no. All right. There was more money in um, yeah. ice hockey than pool. Well, it's a proper sport, though. I, I lost money playing pool. Yeah. Um, so... But what made, what made you get into business from ice hockey? Being in a wheelchair. Really? That does focus the mind, right? Um, so, yeah, though I had to focus for the best part of two years to try to get out and walk again, which uh, focuses the mind. And then uh, uh, became, as everybody does, a consultant. Uh, wanted to shoot myself on a daily basis, but I learned a lot. And then um, always wanted to be an entrepreneur. My parents were entrepreneurs. so uh, And went into kind of the kind of corporate rescue, turning around things in trouble. Uh, because, one, it's... The closest thing to sport in terms of pressure, managing teams and so on. So I enjoyed that and never looked back. So we, I traveled with a team of five people across the planet. We've turned uh, nine major projects around uh, and uh, we're doing that one now. Do you think then that as a sports person um, and playing professional sport really helped you in the transition into business? Uh, it still helps me on a daily basis. In, in what well, sort of managing thing? pressure, uh, management of stress, manager of success, manager of failure. Uh, how you reinvent yourself, how you inspire people in crisis, um, yeah, which is why we took that line of, of jobs. And I got two guys in the team uh, who are ex-professional football players. Okay. So, so, so we, we hire a lot of people with sport background because, and, or army actually, because that management of pressure, management of, of being able to handle and, and strive under pressure is quite crucial in what we do. So um, some of the businesses that you've been involved in, um you you were involved in the Millennium Dome? Yes, you? the so tent, the tent in Greenwich. Now the most successful entertainment venue in Europe, sir. So how did, when you got involved in that work, how did you get involved? What was the sort of the state of it at the time? And, and then what, what sort of... As, as anything do? we do, it, it was in a sorry, poor... I'm not allowed to swear on TV. Like, so so it, was, it was in a disastrous state. That's what, that, that's what we do. We come in and we're fixing. Uh, we're not very clever. Two of us are French, which is always a handicap. Uh, but that's what we do. We come in and, and the way we look at business is we look at the product and we say, can we reinvent this product? Can we reposition it? If it's a yes, we do it. 
Uh, then we look at which is the finance or the business model. Can we again raise equity, raise debt? Can we reinvent the business model and improve the profitability of the business? And then last but not least, people. You know, who are the people managing the business? Can we inspire them to do differently? Are they going to follow us with our credit management style? And then if the three equations work, then we take on the business and we go. Got lucky so far. So let's hope that one won't be the last one. It's always the last one. The, the challenge around turnaround, corporate rescue, you're, it's like in sport. You're as yeah. good as your last one. And if the last one was a bad one, and like in sport, you won't find a job again. When, when, you, take out, when you take on a business, do you go in as consultants then, or do you actually purchase oh, the building? Why are you insulting me? Yeah, not anymore. You, no. see, you mentioned consultants. I learned, I learned. That. Well, basically, I got paid to learn. That was good consultant, yeah. you know. So now you purchase the buildings. Absolutely. Well, so. well, it's not buildings, it's businesses. So we, yeah. we co-invest. Usually we're brought in there by banks, receivers, uh, shareholders, and yeah. they say, come and help us. Okay. And then, so are you, are you basically getting into the business for virtually no money? And oh, yeah. 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 No, we come in, we, we fix it. And then hopefully, you know, when we come out and we, you know, the, the, the kind of proud thing is we're here to save jobs. Yeah. Right? And change people's life, which is, you know, it's not bad. Um, you know, it's, it might not be the oldest job in the world, but it's surely making, you know, we're, one, we're in leisure, entertainment, sports, which, you know, is a good industry because yeah. we're paid to make people happy. Uh, and two, if we can turn around businesses and save jobs, is you go home and you're quite, you know, in the morning, you're still looking at an ugly face, but at least you can shave properly without, you know, being ashamed, which is pretty good. I, I wrote a book. You should read it. I, I will. I, I wrote a book. Where, where is a copy? <laughs> Hey, none with me. But I, I actually wrote a book called No Money Down Property Investing. So doing property investing with no money. And, um, but I do generally houses. And, but we, we go in and we'll take on a house that's similar to a business, yeah. I guess, where the, the, the owner has got a, a debt that they're struggling to handle. Or a landlord's got a property they're struggling to rent out and it's got a debt they're struggling to handle. And we come in and we re-change that property. Cool. So I guess for people listening to this that are starting off in, whether it be a single at house, the principles are very similar. Exactly similar. Yeah. Uh, I, the, the latest project, London Resort, the number is so big, I've never worked with yeah. big numbers like this. So, you know, I, I'm used to talk about thousands or hundreds of thousands. We're talking hundred millions, not billions yeah. in this one. But the, the philosophy about managing a billion or about managing hundred million or 10 or one or hundred K is exactly the same. Mm. The principle of finance, the principle of, of good accounting, the principle of making sure you've got the skills to do it and you surround yourself with the right people it's exactly the same for a small business or a major corporation i guess you're just dealing with some more zeros exactly yeah but more zeros on on value is more zeros on profit in a way hopefully too. hopefully that's the goal really that's the goal yes. you got a lot of zeros in the red and you want to move in the blue or in the black it's pool again yeah here we go here we yeah. go we gotta get I, in i really suck at pool we should have a game. No. I'm not playing you on hockey. Golf, though. golf. I'll take you on golf. Deal. <laughs> no you hockey. Lose. No, no shots. I want to keep my ball no in, in one piece. All right, deal. Did you did you hear uh, Vettel last uh, Formula One? What did he say? He said uh, he was interviewed and said, um, obviously you're in Italy. It is important for Ferrari. What's your prediction? And he said, uh, well, I got balls, but none of them are crystals. I know. That's a good answer. Yeah, it's pretty good. And he not very win. politically correct, but... You know. he, he didn't win, so he was probably right not to predict. Well, the, but the French guy, Leclerc won. He did. The French guy did win. That's why you brought this up. French guy up. from Monaco. He's not Should really we French. mention rugby? Are we not talking rugby? Uh, I'm, I'm just leaving now. Rugby World Cup. Yeah. Um, Another <laughs> embarrassment for the frogs. Coming. <laughs> Don't depress me. It's Sunday. I'm so having a nice you, time. You brought, you brought you brought French success into this. I had to bring French failure. Um, listen, listen. The, the very very serious newspaper wait, see, last wait. month. Listen, listen. Last month voted me the most popular Frenchman in the UK. Really? Now, how many Frenchmen are in the UK? Exactly. Since Thierry Henry retired, it's not much competition. Is it? <laughs> When, when people listen to this podcast, Ireland, yes. Ireland will have won the World Cup in rugby. I think, I think all blacks are winning. Possibly. You might make it semi or final. And you know what? The roast beefs look really good. I'm beginning to get a picture of why you're successful in um, business because you're, you're, um, you're, you're like, um, like you said about sport, it's about drive, isn't it? It's about determination to succeed. It's about success. We're, we're the same, aren't we? Yeah. It's, it is. You've got to bring, you know, especially when you're in trouble, if you don't bring stamina, energy and positive attitude, you've got to struggle. And, and having a very strong sense of humor, 
because in the, you know you're gonna as you know you're gonna have dark days you're gonna have yeah. days you want to give up and if you if you have a good laugh that day then you know you're gonna be all right it gets you through yeah. it's actually a really yeah. good point is is in business it's it's a serious thing but if you don't have a way of um lightening the Absolutely. seriousness you've Got. Working for the mouse in the old days when we turned around Euro Disney, um, I love a phrase from Walt Disney when he said, uh, we are very serious business people. We don't take ourselves seriously. I quite like that. I think that's cool. That's really pretty cool. cool. Yeah, because it, it, is, it is a serious business, but it, it, it can be um, stressful, etc. You've got to be able to like Agree. let some of that stuff go. Completely. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm, I'm an I'm a Irish comic. No. <laughs> You've been in business for 30... That's why you're in business, because yeah. the comic didn't work like Paul, isn't it? It's true, yeah. yeah. Okay. I've, I've, I've just come from an event where nobody laughs at my jokes, so I just have to say to them, that's a joke. Um, and then they still don't that's laugh. That's not funny. Still doesn't laugh. But that's fine. Yeah. Keep on doing what you're doing, really. What is it? Don't quit your day job. Exactly. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, that's that. Luckily, the business goes better than the comedy. Um, 30 that's years that. in 30. Business. 30. 30. Not 33. No, 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 no. That's 30 years age. age. What, are, what are the key learnings over 30 years in business? Oh, God, you have a few days. I've got um, I tell you, one thing and one thing only, it's about three things, about people, people, and people. Everybody talks about it, but nobody acts. And, and if you don't remember that your best asset, actually, the people, people. in the business, uh, and most of the most important people, the frontline staff, the guys who are serving the food, who are, you know, cleaning the floor, you know, if, they, if they're not fitting the integral part of your business and don't wear the brand on their sleeve, you're going to fail. Um, so that's that's really you know the inspiring thing, and this is why being from from a sport background is really important because you know you can be the best player on the team, you can be Lionel Messi if you don't get the guy the guys playing for you and and give you the pass and trust you to score, you know you're not going to go anywhere. So yeah. which is the difference why Barcelona is built around Messi and Argentina can do anything because they don't build around you know yeah. the Messi. <laughs> that was funny. That's why I don't do comic either. <laughs> <laughs> Barcelona's messy. Um, oh, but it is. I'd like to be that messy too. They had great players by Argentina and they could have won it had they played as a team. Yeah. And that's, it is business, well, isn't you've it? you've got to capitalise, you know, when we had Zidane and Henri, we were, we were building around. Now, you know, France got pretty much the best team in the world, so you can capitalise on a collective. But yeah. when you got a Messi, you got to play and make sure he's, he shines. Yeah. And and that is course. Same for Zidane, same for Henri. So same in business. Same in business. If you go to star, instead of trying to say no, no, you need to be like everybody else. Say, no, no, no. We you know lead the way. Now it's leadership by example. So that, another another lesson. If you're, you know, if you're if if you're going to carry responsibilities and you're going to be the captain of the team, you got to lead by example. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not do what I say, not what I do. It doesn't work that way. That's interesting because I, I teach a lot of people about property investing, and I always say the same thing: is property is not about buying houses. Property is about people. Yeah. And you're it's a people business. You're solving a person's problem when you're taking on a property, and then your customer is your tenant. They're people. Yeah. And if you don't look after your Tenant, don't see them as a tenant who just pays you rent for a property. They're your customer. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to look after your customer, and they automatically look after your property, which is your business. And whether that be the, a small single at house or the Millennium Dome, it, it all starts with people. And so, so when we were ex leisure and, and we had big things like escapes where we are a lot of tenants, and um, you know, I, I was basically walking around saying, I don't want to hear that, that word, it's a business partner. Yeah. You know, it's it, we're in business together. If they don't understand your your philosophy about a destination, how you want to manage the overall brand, they they you know they'll open the wrong hours. They, they they will not give you the quality of service that you deserve. And who's going to get hurt at the end? You are. Yeah. Because people don't go to X restaurant or to X shop. They go to escape. And if they have a bad experience in the cinema because the popcorn was not hot enough yeah. or the lady at the door was rude. It's not going to be Cineworld or, or View or any other cinema brand. It's going to be you. So, so if you're not, you know, as a property owner, if you're not able to attract the right, able of attract the right attitude towards the entire network of your tenants or your business partner, you're just going to fail. Right. And, and this is why I think the, the way to look at property is, is you're an operating business. You're not, yeah. you're not a property yeah. landlord. You're, you, you have several businesses that you have to interact with and you need to make sure they're happy because if they perform, you'll get your rent and more. That's how I see it. But what do I know? Well, 
But then mm. you've been quite successful, so I'm, I think a lot of people are learning a lot here. What is Donald Palmer used to say? I'd rather be lucky than good any day. It's true. You, yes. The more I practice, the luckier I get. Yes. It's, it's Napoleon. Napoleon. I'd Napoleon, rather have yeah. a lucky general than a good general, right? Both you, will be better. Your businesses that you've been involved in have been, they're all, obviously business is the similarity, but they're all very different as well, or some of them are very different. So how, how do you start by going from one type of business into something completely different? Um, what, what's the commonalities? What's the connection, I guess? What's the, what's the, or, or are you looking and, and learning from scratch on each business? How, how do you Yeah, I mean, this, together? this is a difficulty and this is where, you know, you've got to be with the right people because you add talent. So when we moved into leisure property, I had no idea. We've been operators all our life and turning operating businesses. So when people say, you know, what's a 25-year lease with Covenant? I'm like, what the heck is that? And so we are a young lady who was a junior asset manager in a cupboard somewhere. And she became, within two years, property director and went on to be the head of leisure and property at Land Securities. Uh, and she was an absolute star. So I think the role of an entrepreneur or leader is, is to find that talent and, right. and to make sure they thrive. And then they teach you. She taught me everything I know about property. I didn't like, you know, I say, I don't like that brand. I want them out. It's like, well, you got a 25 year old. He said, you know, when we move into property, it was all about, you know, covenant is everything. And then what's this big guy's gone out? What's the proper, what the covenant or, or strategy, what is it? Strategic voids. I love yeah. that one. It's basically, you're not competent enough to feel the spaces. So you have strategic voice. So, you know, again, it's, it's, and the way we approached it is yes. You got your leases in place, but you know, you want to be the turnover rent because that's the way you get into the business and you get to say, listen, I got skin in your business. So, you know, let's work together. Um, so I think identifying and, and as I always say, so I, a professor, um, so I teach at London Business School for a long, long time. And, and basically we, we were talking about what's a real talented entrepreneur. And, and I think a good entrepreneur is a, is a matchbox. And, and the matches come and scratch and then shine and then they go away somewhere else. Uh, I think that the responsibility of an entrepreneur is not only legacy and, and, and building replacement, but it's also allowing, you know, like my young lady um, to, to be able to shine and to develop. And then she goes somewhere else and, and we, we lost, quote, uh, a lot of people along the way who said, you know, I'm done with you guys. I'd like to settle down. and. And suddenly you find them in other places at CEO, chairman position, and they're going to help you. So my entire network is people who used to work, you know, with me. Yeah. So whether uh, they're in and another they help company you. or not. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the way you measure your success is these people when N plus two, N plus three from a good operations director, you became a CEO. So it's just, oh, good. I need you there. Uh, and I found that, you know, on the London Resort Project, I just found, you know, one of our young asset manager who just become somebody very important, in a big private equity house who's going to invest in our business. Why? Because his kids would say, you know what, this is the guy that allowed me to be here. So how important do you think your network is to you then in business? It's, it's massive. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's everything. I think, I think the, uh, the, the headhunter industry is going to die pretty nice soon because... Yeah. It's all about the network because you got to find, especially in our business, we need to find people we can trust because we're moving so fast and making so many decisions very quickly that can, and, and that have a direct influence on performance of business. If you have to look over your shoulder and say, can I trust her or can I trust him? And I think I'll be loyal because, you know, again, you know, key values, loyalty, honesty, ethics. That's all we ask from people. Mm. You know, you can be disagreeing with us, but once the majority has made the call, we're going on and, and, you know, be loyal to the calls. So if you're surrounded by people like this, basically anybody that tries to attack your business, you've got an army around you. So, and then again, they leave and they pass on those key values to other people. Yeah. And then you find yourself, you know, your entire network sinks, behaves, you know, the way you want them to behave as business partners. And then you're very happy and also it's nice PR. You know, as that young guy said, you know, I want to do business with that guy. And he said, wow, you know, it's a big, it's a big risk. You know, London Resort. Oh my God, three billion investment, massive. Said, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm here, thanks to this guy. This guy here, yeah. you know, and he's ahead of Europe, so they're gonna follow, which is great. And and I think this is a nice place to be. And you know, at the end of the day, when um, so so I have a stupid rule, which any any business you've been involved with, I don't go back, because if I go back, I start to believe my own BS of saying, oh, we've done quite well, haven't we? 
So they are retired, they are close shop and I yeah. go full time golfer. Then I'll go back, but uh, I don't go back. It's it's look forward. The, otherwise, you sit on your laurels and you have a nice yeah. Coke Zero and uh, and well, you're Irish. You have a Guinness, obviously. Not stereotyping at all. I got the BI as a baguette and uh, Coke he won't I know. I don't drink. <laughs> I don't drink. I, I'm too outrageous already. My wife said, if you start to drink, you say, this is going to be the end of you. So that's okay. I'm the only Irish guy you've probably ever met that never drank a day well, in his life. Same, same. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that so many so. times of the Frenchmen say, "You're French. You don't drink." And they look at you very suspiciously. Did you stop drinking? Yes. Yeah. No, I never start. I turned pro hockey player at 16 years old. I was a midget. I had to be either faster or work more than the big guys. So they were getting plastered, and I was spending more time on the ice. Yeah. It's a choice, isn't it? Huh? In it, in it. It's true. Uh, you reinvented yourself from a hockey player to a business person. Five times. I reinvented my life five times. This is my sixth. So what were the other... Because, because well, every time you do a turnaround, when you finished, mm. successful or not, and we yeah. got, where is wood? We got enough chance to have done nine turnarounds successfully. But suddenly, and this is, this is another big lesson in life, is when you're at the helm of something big, like I just became... You got all the fair weather friends that come out. Yeah. You know, oh great, I'm so happy for you. Lula. You finish and then you go a bit quiet for a while to look at for the next big enjoy. adventure. Let's just go away. So 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 for me the only people who matter in life are the bad weather friends. The ones who are still there when you're down or you hurt or or you're trying to find the next thing and but it's quite funny. I'm not cynical because otherwise, you know, it's a shit like Apologies, it's a very bad life <laughs> uh, if you become cynical, but it's, it's quite amusing to see the uh, ballerina type of, you know, <laughs> you know, oh, pff, you, oh, I'm busy this week, can't see you. Oh, yeah, I'll call you back, don't worry. And then suddenly you learn something else and say, you know, oh, well, of course I was yeah. going to call you, but of course I'm available for you. Yeah. So it is, there's a lot. Take it with a pinch of salt. Is that what it is in English? So, yeah. And you learn bad weather friends, bad weather yeah. friends, Kevin. It's all about bad weather friends. There's the one who matters, you know. And, and again, when you measure success, I don't think it's the number of zeros in your bank account, it's about how many bad weather friends do you have, yeah. and do you have enough money to treat family, friends, and yourself to a few toys. But it's, you can't take the money with you, can you? Well, it's how much, isn't it? Yeah, yeah what is it? The, the saying, the richest man in the cemetery, yeah, yes, yes. right. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have fun, you gotta have the toys a bit, otherwise, yeah. you know. So what, what is your golden rule in business? Is there like one golden rule, do you think, when you've gone into a business? That you so, have? as I say, we got, a, we got a matrix because I get quite enthusiastic uh, and I got a horrible man who's got as much hair as you got. Um, this who's, is the result of business. Yeah, well, exactly. He had a he full head of hair when he met me. And we've been together. We've done our MBA together. Um, and, uh, and, and basically, he's been my CFO for 25 years, if not more now. And basically, he's the one who said, we have golden rules. If, you know, the product is not right, the, the business plan or the business model is not right, and the people are not right, we're just not getting involved. Yeah. And I, I need discipline because I'm the one who's going to be inspired and say, no, no, we can do this. I said, sorry, mate, look, the business model is just not there. We will not do this. Are you very clear when you look at a new business? Because obviously, the businesses you've gone into are failing. They've got a track yes. record of failure. Yes. And you're going in and taking... In a way, what people, a lot of people are listening and thinking, a massive risk, especially when there's so many zeros involved, yep. to a business that other people haven't been able to work on. Do you, do you have a very clear sort of structure of how you decide to go into that or not? Or does some of it still come on like good feeling? Kevin, you didn't listen. The three pillars. I, I, yeah. Product, finance, business model, and people. Yeah. That's it. And that's enough because, you know, Obviously, in the finance model, you're going to see the balance sheet. You're going to see the spread, you know, the, the, the operating business performance. You're going to see the EBITDA. And, and I would say a good entrepreneur is 50-50. The finance guy is 80-20, 80 data, 20 gut feel. Good entrepreneur is going to be still 50-50. And I want to be 50-50. Then he slaps me and say, well, so I'm 60-40. You need the data. You, you need to be properly informed. The problem is most of the time when you enter these businesses, you open a cupboard, there's 25 collections that fall you didn't know of. So that's where you need to get the gut feel. So can we really do this? And, and don't take me wrong. I think the ninth turnaround, this is going to be the tenth. That's where we do it. Um, God for that. Um, there's very often, I would say on a weekly basis, 
put your hand, you put your hand in your hand and say, what the hell did we decide to do this? Uh, that's where the humor comes back. And it says, uh, you know, well, you know, full-time golfer is not a bad idea. Um, and, and, you know, we will fall on our face. We got, as I said, we got very successful and we got very lucky um, to, do, to do nine big ones and, and score. I love the new one. I think it's very inspiring. It's right down my alley. I'm really excited. But damn, it's complicated. And it's a 24-7 and I'm losing sleep. So uh, it's great. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Sure, yeah, sure. Cool. So, so London Resorts, basically, it's, it's a kind of on and off failed project of the vision uh, is to basically design what they call a category one theme park, which is a big monster like the mouse on the other side of the water I used to, to work for. So I got a benchmark. We turned around the biggest, worst ever, you know, theme park in Europe. So if we done it there... Lord Disney. Yes. Yeah. If we done it there with the Walt Disney Company on the top of it and we survived, we're thinking, we can do this. Uh, I think what's exciting is, is and very inspiring is, you know, the morale in this country has been down for quite a while. Mm. And it says bad news and but bad news and maybe we won't see the next day because it will be we will be expelled out of the country. Uh, but I hope not. Uh, but but you know to be creating so many jobs mm. uh, to create something that we hope UK PLC can be proud of. That's a good legacy. Yeah. You know all the turnarounds we've done were were very businessy. This is what's exciting about that one is one we're going to create something. Usually we fix something. We're, we're fixing the organization, but we haven't delivered. So to deliver something and, and, and to make a difference to so many people, uh, it's quite inspiring. So I get, I get, a, I get very, I could, I was going to be a rude thing. I've got a hard on every day, but I can't say that. So <laughs> Too late, you said it. Yeah, no, no, I didn't. Absolutely <laughs> not. What Boris says, I never said that. I never, never said, said that. that. 350? No, no, that's not me. In that bit, that's not me. Um, but yes, uh, you know, it, it, I run to work every day, which is cool, which is the way you want to be. I mean, another lesson is, is if you get up, and especially the, the millennials and the next generations, um, I think the big difference is, is you're younger, but my generation, the one before, you know, you're obliged to behave. You're obliged to go to work and you're obliged to work for a company. You kind of, you know, can't wait for the weekend. Mm. Uh, I think, and, and I'm, a, I'm a kind of non-typical person. Uh, but our generation change jobs maximum two or three times in our life. Yeah. So I'm at my sixth one. I'm already non-typical. But I think the new generation, they're just going to go work. One, for people they want to work for. Yeah. Two, brands they can be proud to wear as a badge from. And three, they need to behave ethically properly. So, for example, for us, London Resort, we're going to be, you know, opening 224. We'll be halfway to carbon neutral UK. Uh, the ambition is to be the first ever major destination to be carbon neutral and totally green free. So we're talking to, you know, one major, I'm afraid it's French, again, terrible. But we're talking to one major uh, energy supplier who, who's basically is guaranteeing us to be entirely green energy, green energy, 100%. And that, you know, you come out, you come out with that to recruit people can make way easier. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't mean I'm going to sell the toy at the weekend. But, you know, at the end of the day, we will make a difference. And, and in 224, we'll say, you know, no, 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 it can be done. We've done it. Yeah. You know. And, That's a huge and legacy to leave. Massive, to. massive. Yeah. And, and again, you lead by example. Yeah. So uh, am I never going to fly again? Of course I'm going to fly again. But, you know, if we can make a difference mm -hmm. step by step. That's cool. And I got a 10 year old who was giving me a hard time every time I, I drink out of plastic. And, but these are, these are our future employees. You know, yeah. if, if you're not impec behaving impeccably and, and have a brand that stands behind true principles, you're just going to say, I'm talented. I'll go work for somebody else. Yeah. And that's, very, very that's, good point, yeah. And Generation Y is very difficult to manage because, you know, our generation says, you know, do what is in a question. I don't sugar disaster, you know. I got two, you got one, you do what I say, no question. Well, these guys say, uh-uh, why? Yeah. Explain me why. They say, I'm paying you. That's not good enough. I can go work somebody else. Show me you behave properly. Show me I'm going to have a career. Show me I can be proud, proud to wear that badge here. That's a hell of a challenge for management and leadership. Mm. And that's exciting too. Because basically, if you're not the same person, male or female, at home and at work, it doesn't work anymore. I think what if that, I put the suit on and I sit in the boardroom and I say, mm. and I'd be a totally different at who I am really, 
it has to be right through you. Mm. And again, it's even more complicated for small businesses and SMEs and small entrepreneurs because, you know, you are interfacing these people. You're not hiding in a boardroom or an ivory tower behind an error report. You're there on the floor with you people every day. And if you don't manage them properly, again, we come back to what we say. People, people, people. Yeah. And having that, that um, sort of top-down approach where people, I guess, are working for you because yeah, they want to, rather Absolutely. Than they have to. Is and this is where we are. And, yeah. and people don't realize that. It's, it's, you know, they're going to say, but, well, you need a job. Say, no, I don't need a job. I need, I need one, I don't want to work like a dog. Yeah. This is us. We work like dogs. But, but you know, new generation say, I want to have a bit of fun. Oh, no, no, you've got to work hard. No, I don't have to work hard. Because if I'm talented, I can do in four days what you do in seven. Because I'm more talented than you, I'm going to do it in four. And the other day, I'm going to go play golf or I'm going to go play bowling or pool. Why? Because my productivity is so good that you can't, you can't ask me to work a fifth day because I've done everything you told me and more in four. And that works for me. I mean, trust me, if I could work three days a week right now to deliver this project, you would, yeah. then I would keep my good handicap, which has, I'm sure has gone out of the window in the past three months. So, so this is what we as entrepreneurs are facing. And, and if you're a small entrepreneur, it's, as I say, it's even more challenging because yeah. you need to be more inspiring. Because they meet so, them face to face. Yeah, yeah. you know, because again, you, you don't know if your business is going to be there or not a month later or a quarter later, which is where I say the, 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 the barriers between crisis management and normal business has blurred. Because there's not many businesses in this point in time between the macroeconomics, Brexit, and the kind of general atmosphere, you know, in the global economy that can say, next quarter, I know where we are. I, re I remember Disney days, we used to stand, we were a PLC, used to turn in the booth and say, this is our five-year plan, this is our 10-year vision, this is our next two-year business plan. You know, last time before we saw Lex Leisure, I remember standing in the city in front of the analysts and say, this is our six-month plan, this is our three-month strategy, and this is our one-month target. Because you just don't know. Yeah. And if you start to BS, you're just going to fall into your trap. Um, or you become a politician, then you get away with everything. Uh, but, but, you know, this is the, the, the rule of business today. This is why being very adaptable and be reactive. Mm. Because obviously in the past, say, you need to predict. You know, the role of a good leader is to be able to predict, to be able to anticipate. Right now, you're, you're in the fog. You don't see the future. So how do you kind of step back and, and be the visioneer, but you know, at the end of the day, you need to do, to do the stuff on a daily basis. In your, do you see yourself as somebody who like, um, then I guess hires the right people to deliver the vision and you're the visionary rather than the, the, um, delegator. So you, yeah, I, I, I wish, well, you? as an entrepreneur, I am a crap delegator. I, I, I interfere all the time because you know, and I interfere on certain subjects, certain subjects, which is going to be attitude, which is going to be the values. I'm not going to, you know, Pierre was my CFO, you know, I'm not going to teach him how to do a spreadsheet or finance model because he's 10 million times better than me. But I want to make sure he treats his team properly. And I want to make okay. sure that, you know, and he knows I'm interested in what the bottom line is, not what in the spreadsheet. So, so yes, I don't delegate enough. Um, but, you know, once I'm surrounded with the five people, we close the door. I got one voice. I might have a veto because, you know, I'm the MFIC, but which is in charge. I'll let you imagine my DMF. This is still on my business card. I'm about to do the new ones. Yes. I'll have a think about it. Yes, that. please do. It's very Irish. <laughs> um, top of the afternoon to you. Uh, I know. I sound like from. <laughs> you sounded very Irish else. there. Oh, was I? Yeah. Oh, that's a compliment. I like that. You've been to Ireland at least once. Oh, no, no, no. I spent a lot. <laughs> golfer. I spent a lot of time under the rain in your country. Best golf courses in the world. Oh, uh, yes. And golfers. And golfers. Rory. Too. Rory. Um, no, but so, so I think I could delegate enough, but, but you know, people work around you and, yeah. and, you know, this is my flow and nobody's perfect. Uh, but I still like to get involved. You know, the, the guy who's going to run the park, who's going to be, you know, the vice president of the park, knows I'm going to be there every weekend and give him a hard time on, you know, managing the attraction properly because I was an operator and I love it. And this is touching the product every day. And that, if you ask, apart from being a hockey player, what was the best job of my life was operations director at Disney. Because every time, you know, 
I, I, I could open the door of my office, walk down the stairs, I'm in the park, I'm touching the product, I'm touching the, the, the customer, and I'm touching the employees. And, and you know, you, you can see what you're producing on a daily basis. So I, I still got that feel and, you know, and How? again, this guy, he's been with me. He was, he was a, a, an hourly cast member at Disney and became director of operations in three years. So he's got, he, he knows, he knows. He's a very close friend and he, and he already warned me. He said, you're not going to do that, are you? I said, you know I'm going to do it. I said, yeah, no. You are. How important would you rate that as, as in a business where you um, are not just leading the business from the top, but you understand like the operator. Yeah, um, no, but you have to. I think, I think and, and your role is to define the moment where you're in the helicopter for the vision and the strategy and, and looking forward as much as you can in the fog. Uh, but then, you know, to be able to prove you still know, you're still there. You know, the old, the old lion, you know, I'm still there. I can't I can row more than you and I can't I can run this thing as good as you are. So, you know, be, give you a bit of credibility and street cred. You, you need that. You need that. You, you, you cannot be better than anybody else because I think, you know, again, the role of an entrepreneur, a CEO or a chairman or, or head of department, whatever you want to call the title, is, is, is to be a conductor. Because, you know, the, the, the era of, you know, the apprentice and you're fired is over. Mm -hmm. I'm firing you, mate, you know, because, by the way, all my generation are shareholders in your business and you're a chairman, you mean you're managing badly this business, you're out of here. This is what's going to happen, right? Yeah. So, so forget the your fire type of thing, and then I'm a dictator, and you do what I say. It's not that. It's I'm a conductor. I know the pianist is a billion times better than me. I know the percussionist is better than me. I know, I know, you know, the choir is much better than I could sing. But I'm here to make sure everybody same sing and play from the same hemp sheet. And once you accept that, you, you accept it. And, and because, you know, you got marketing geniuses, you got product geniuses, you got, you got HR director geniuses, you got finance wizards. Um, but, you know, the more you, you hard talent, the more they have an ego, which goes with the territory. You're just there to just come everybody and say, you might have done the best finance model ever, but it doesn't translate into money. So this guy is the head of sales, is going to hate you for the rest of his life. And, and, you know, if you're not managing and hiring the right people, my lady, as head of human resources, these people will really be packed off. So to come back to your question about 25 minutes ago, we hire people on attitude. And this is going to be a challenge because we're going to hire thousands of people in these projects. Uh, but I tell you what, I will have the Kalashnikov ready because if they are people who don't fit in our, in our values and in our mentality, I will shoot. Because you can't, you know, whatever hundred or thousand people we're going we're gonna to hire, they need to have that vision, they need to have that envy, they need to have that passion. I mean, for me, the benchmark for quality of service, which is still a very different concept in, in our shores, is the benchmark for me is the, is the volunteers in the 2012 Olympics. They didn't get paid. They were excellent operationally. And they had the personal touch and the British sense of humor. You know, yeah. the first time in a, I'm in a queue line, I want to kill people because I'm fed up of queuing and I'm laughing my head off because this guy or that lady cracked a joke and something. This is what we want. It can be done. Can, you know, yeah. 2012 yeah. Olympics, it's not only the first time, you know, United Kingdom say, we have organized a grand project that didn't fall apart. And say, got to put me on, mm. you know, on the dole because yeah. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be working anymore. But the delivered and and the spirit of the people, this is what we want to catch, mm. and this is what we want, the kind of people we want to have in our business. You were doing it for free. I'm going to pay you a shitload of money, but I still want that style and the attitude of we can do and we can be ourselves. You know, forget the Disney scene. You can have a beard. You can have a, an earring. This is, this is 2020. You can behave as much as you want, as long as the people who come across you are happy and feel, feel treated, you know, feel that you welcome them. You can do it in Irish, in French, in Japanese or in Chinese, and you can crack a joke, better than ours, hopefully. Um, and if you change, you know, a kid who was crying into laughing, you made a difference. Awesome. Well, that's fun. That's really yeah. fun. And then it's part of something bigger than just a job. I, I believe leaders are never in a job. We're yeah. on a mission. Yeah. You know, entrepreneurs, we're never in a job. We're in a mission because otherwise we were very bad at what we do. And you've, again. You've been very good at what you do and you've done it this. Compliment. 
but you have, and you've done it many, many times. Money, is, money. How do you, um, how do you protect yourself and the business that you've gone into from, I guess, the overconfidence or the ego of, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. I had success, 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 success. I can do, I can turn any business around and let that little bit extra, t- I'll take this business on when maybe it's, it's the ego or the past success rather than the actual looking at the business. Is that back to your team? How do you make yeah, sure that you well, First of all, ego is not bad. You know, to, you know, I'm French. I don't do humble. Doesn't work. <laughs> I, I could try, but this, it's not in our DNA. So, so I don't believe in being humble. As I was saying, the, the fact that you you don't look behind and you don't go back and you say, "Well, not quite well." First of all, it's not I; it's we. Because without the team, we, I would have delivered nothing in sport or anywhere else. And and I got the big ego one time in my life. I was 20 years old. And I was that young, you know, prospect, hockey player. I was one of the faster skaters in Europe. I was really up there. And you know what? I started to be, you know, believe my own BS. And I lost two of my closest friends uh, because they just couldn't cope with me anymore. And, you know, my parents, bless them, you know, just put me back on the ground and say, if you behave like this, you're going to be a royal prick. It's a technical term. For the rest it's of your life, term. it's an Irish term, yes, and and basically you're gonna find yourself all alone. So yes, you might be an international and Olympian, but you know, what is it to celebrate your Coke Zero on your own, alone? Mm. And that really shook me up. Uh, and I lost these two friends. You know, we haven't spoken since, and and they made a point, and and I'm very grateful. Um, so so I think you know. It's fine to have an ego because you need that confidence because if, if, if you're shaky, people won't follow you. It's Napoleon, sorry for that, on the Pont d'Arcon. You seize the flag and you go. And you know you can get shot. Now, if you don't get shot, it's okay to celebrate a bit. You're still alive. So it's okay to celebrate. It's okay to... But, but I think my, my personal recipe is not looking behind. I look behind when I properly retire, which I'm sure will be not happening. <laughs> And I, hopefully I'll die on a heart attack on the 18th green at Augusta, which is a nice way to go. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I think this one is a big one. It's going to be quite long term. So I think that might be the last big one. Uh, and I story is passing on. That's why I do London Business School and Imperial College. It's, I love that. It's pass on. That's what I'm doing today. It's, it's, yeah. it's being able to witness and to pass on beliefs. Uh, and if that can help people, that's cool. Uh, yeah. But... I think ego is all right, as long as you don't believe that, you know, you're above and better than anybody yeah. else. But being confident and being proud of what you've done and achieved, I think you should. Um, but yeah, as I say, don't... And, and you know very quickly, and, and you surround yourself with people yeah. who are going to slap you. i got an English wife. She's lovely. But I've got to tell you what, if I go up the rail, I know very quickly. And I know the CEO of the house is definitely not me. Uh, and you know my parents are like those. this. You got one of those. It's yes. Not English, but I've that's got one. proper dictatorship. That is yes. So England never beat the French. You try. They tried to invade us for three hundred years. He's taken over. I tell you. <laughs> you know, Liverpool even worse. <laughs> proper dictatorship. But you know, it's it's. I got close friends and and the people, the team, the five people. If I behave like a bonehead and and you know start to play the king stuff, is mm. you know, calm yourself down here. They'll close the door and say, they, they, you know, they won't, we won't embarrass us, and I'll do the same. But the number of times of Pierre, my CFO, went in, closed the door and say, you, you, what are you, you're a superstar now? You're just, you're just too good for us or something. And, say, oh. and it's apologies immediately because there's no barriers. There's no obstruction. They say, you know, I'm going to tell you what it is. And if he does, I'll do the same for him. So I think it's making sure you're surrounding you surround yourself people who are not afraid of the hierarchy or the titles or the money or whatever, the power, yeah. and just tell you as it is, I'm your friend. I'm not your CFO right now. I'm your friend. And I think you're, you're behaving really like an imbecile. It's not going to, you know, it's not you. Mm. Go back, come back. You know, moon is up there. Earth is here. Get back to Earth. And yeah, fortunately, I'm happy to say it didn't happen that many times in the past 25 years, but a few times. Yeah. And you need your friends and family to That's just say, you know what? Calm yourself down. I always say, who's going to be there on the on your last day when you're putting you in the box in the ground or the whatever? Bad weather you friends. Yeah, the bad weather friends. There's the one who are going to say, yeah, you know, he was a good. That's all you want, right? Mm. He made a difference, and he was a good man. That's good enough for me, and a good friend.
That's good awesome. enough for me. We've we've got a um, a lot. Most of our listeners are are, are either they're property investing. They're either started or thinking about getting started in property. What advice would you give people who are sort of thinking about getting into property business and to to sort of start and scale and grow their business? What sort of what would the main advice you'd give them? Um, I would say you know small is beautiful. You know it's not about getting big. Is is again is being successful on on your own and and then if you if you want to grow make sure you surround yourself with the, with the right people, um and and you know, it's not about going big. There's so many people want to go big quickly and totally failed. So step by step, you know, and again make sure you got around you people who are gonna you know support you, embrace you, and and drive the thing forward with you, and take them with you for a long long time. Um, you know, as, a, as I said, the five people around me or with me uh, have been there for a very, very long time. They must, they must I don't know. Really, I must I, be attractive. I can really resonate with that answer because mm. I, when I started in my property business years ago, I, I tried to become a millionaire in six months and I lost everything. Um, and then it took me years to recover. Yep. And now I just kind of do one deal at a time. And, and you, you, where you get to in a couple of years is a different place to where you were. So it's about, yeah, just not trying to get too big, too big. Yeah, exactly. Really and I, I advise a lot of friends who are small entrepreneurs and, you know, they say, no, no, we want to go big. We find private equity with triple the size. And they say, first of all, PE is going to take your business away from you because they'll find a finance guy who's much better than what you do. <laughs> and two, they'll change the ethos and the philosophy. And you're like, you're going to turn around. You might sit on a, you know, a nice new house and a Porsche. But again, you're going to be on your own and drinking your own champagne and being depressed. Uh, or you're going to end up in the gutter with nothing. Um, so so it's, it's, you know, build a business, take the time. It's not for nothing that, you know, you, you build with time and, and it's sustainability. And then, you know, life is not easy at the moment. So if you, I think you should jump. I mean, you know, I, I spend my life in London Business School saying, if you're going to be a consultant, I don't want you in this room. I'm talking only to future entrepreneurs because we don't have enough. Uh, and it's great. You know, you're in your own master. You know, I don't want, you always have masters, right? You have a bank, you have an investor, you have a chairman or chairwoman. But you know what? You're the chief exec. You created the business. You know, that's my business. Yeah. It's awesome. I've got a couple of questions Shoot. coming towards the end. Shoot. Um, that's, this has been phenomenal, to be honest. I've really, really enjoyed this. But Good man. I want to know. Um, oh, dear. And th this is just. For you, simple, simple, really. Hopefully, but it might be one or two things. But simple. what would you say would be the the best advice anybody's ever given you? Oh God! Um, first of all, to open the the conversation on that subject, I think it's crucial for anybody starting a business to find one or two mentors. I had the luxury to have about two or three who, who basically changed my life. Um, so I think that's very important to, to identify, to find per, a person that's going to make you grow as a person, as a professional, as an entrepreneur. Um, so I had one in sport and, and two in businesses, uh, and they're still there. And, and it was Philippe Bourguignon was my ex-chairman at Euro Disney. He gave me my shot. I was, you know, I was a hockey player moving into business, and I got, he promoted me six times and, and gave me the, you know, the vice presidency. Um, but, you know, to this day, when I was decided, non I picked up the phone and said, Philippe, what do you think? Tell me. And he says, you must be joking. This is tell made for you. Jump. Uh, and, and, you know, we don't see each other often, see each other tw twice a year now. I, but, you know, he was there when I needed him. And I tell you, it might be in the end. And, and again, this is another thing about loyalty and friendship. You know, there's about counting on one hand. But these people, if they're at the ascent of nowhere and they're in trouble, you jump on the plane, no matter what you employ, you got a big deal tomorrow, you got to be a family issue, just go, you know, go and help. But, but I, I, would say, I would say, I think that's crucial to find a mentor who's going to help you through, especially the first steps, and you get a sounding board. Mm. You might not like what you're going to hear most of the time. You know, my, I had a major fight with, with, uh, with my mentor because he left me behind the Euro Disney. He took over Club Med. And of course, I was his number two and his, you know, his creation. So I, I, I did my suitcase. And I, ah, I didn't tell you. You're staying right where you are. I didn't speak to him for three months. I wanted to kill him. What a betrayal. And he did me a favor because, yeah. I, you know, I was able to grow. I was not in the shadow a great number two. 
but I was not in the shadow and I could become somebody mm. on my own. So three months later, I apologized. It cost me a shitload of money to buy a very expensive restaurant. And he does like his wine. Um, so, so I would say that would, be, that would be the key thing. It's not one piece of advice. It's find that mentor who's going to take you on and, and believe in you. What would you say the key trait of a good mentor is? Oh, oh no. What do I know? I don't, I don't know. I, th- I think you, you, you intrinsically feel it. Somebody you can trust, somebody who believes in you, somebody that embrace you, and somebody that kicks your ass to no mm. end when it's needed. Um, you know, mentor can be a brother, it can be a father, a mother, a sister, um, you know. I always say that everybody has a mentor, but some people have a mentor that actually holds them back. Somebody that says, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do this? Are you not comfortable on what you're doing? That you're in a good job, etc. Yeah, but maybe and that's then, useful at the time. You never yeah. know. And Because so, if it's wrong, it's yeah. she or he's not the right yeah. mentor. Yeah, well, I, I, but I want at some time, as I said, you know, Philip said, you stay right where you are. But that's my next thing. I'm going to yeah. move with you and say, no, no, no. You need to behave on your own now. Mm. It was nice, but you're in the shadow. And to this day, if you ask who turned around, you're in the It is Philip Bourguignon. He was the boss. I was one of five people around him, but I was not the guy. Uh, and, and, you know, and he said, you need to make your own legacy now. You're big enough. You don't believe in yourself. And all I read is, you're dumping me, you mother. But he was letting you grow. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so, so that's my mentor. In my book, I was reading, he's betraying me. Everything I've done for him. You know, I, I, I didn't sleep. I, I worked seven days a week. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, he's, he told me, you know, jump off the roof. I will jump off the roof. No problem. Uh, and then he's leaving me on my own. Mm. He did the biggest favor of my career. But at the time, I felt... Mm. What the heck? Because he sees what you don't see. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's a good mentor. Awesome. And worst advice you've ever received? You're never going to be a hockey player. All my life. i tell you what drives my... Uh, if there's one thing that's been driving my... Have you seen a movie called A Few Good Men? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Men of Honor. Men of Honor too, yeah. Okay. Robert De Niro. I think it's Booba Gooding Jr. The first ever black sea diver in the U.S. Navy. And at one point in time, so he's trying, he's trying, he's trying again. And Robert De Niro is a nasty guy who's supposed to push him away because at the time the Navy just doesn't encompass the philosophy or the concept of a black sea diver. And, 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 and he goes to, to, his, to his chamber and he says, he says, why are you trying so hard? And the guy goes, because they told me I couldn't do it. That's me. They told me I couldn't be a hockey player. I was way too small, which is true. I ended up in a wheelchair. They were right, but I still made it. They told me I couldn't be an entrepreneur. It was too late, and I didn't have the right diplomas. I still became an entrepreneur. They told me you can't do an MBA. You got nothing. You're, you're a hockey player, not an academic. Finished up second top of my class. The top of my class is my CFO. Beat me by 0.3 point. I still want to kill him to this day. <laughs> and I will one day, but I need him. Um, and, and so that's really driven, you know, they told me we can't turn around your They told me the dome, forget it, you're never going to do it. X leisure, largest leisure property portfolio, leisure property didn't exist at the time. Everybody's like, oh yeah, leisure property. That asset class didn't exist, we created it. So having property institution backing leisure, you must be joking. PY, you must be French, you must be stupid. And, and we did it. And, you know, we developed a billion three portfolio. Uh, and Nancy have done very well out of it. Um, uh, and then now, I was telling me, you know, that project, it's been dead forever. What are you doing? We're going to do it. So, so I like that. I, I really like that, you know, because they told me I couldn't do it. That is, nice way to finish. That is a lovely way to finish. Hey. So I've really enjoyed Kevin, that. It's been absolutely awesome. It was a pleasure. You've been listening to the Progressive Property Podcast. Um, The podcast is out on iTunes and Stitcher every Tuesday from about 7.30 in the morning. Make sure you've subscribed. Um, So there's a new episode every single Tuesday. You've been listening to PY, um, London Resort Holdings. You need to keep an eye out for it. It's going to be the basically the biggest resort similar to Disney in the UK, plus many future things he's going to be up to because I doubt that's going to be his last project. I'll speak soon. I'm done. Been absolutely awesome. Good man. Speak next week. You've been awesome. I've been Kevin McDonald. Au revoir. Au revoir. That's it. Cheers.